an educational resource on plant breeding. This course material is developed under the Malaysia MOOC and is distributed under the CCBY license. You are free to reuse, remix and share this material. Today's lecture will focus on plant breeding and a specific aspect which is the development of novel plant varieties by mutagenesis. One of the major aspects of plant breeding using chemical mutagenesis is that plants developed using chemical mutagenesis are not categorized as genetically modified. This has several disadvantages and advantages. For instance, the usage of chemical mutagens results in random mutations. This may confer specific disadvantages in terms of characteristics and traits. As opposed to genetic engineering which involves the addition of genes which confer specific traits. This is one of the factors which needs to be discussed when developing novel varieties of plants via chemical mutagenesis. For instance, if the mutagen results in a point mutation in a gene involved in a biosynthetic pathway. A specific trait associated with this pathway can be lost. For instance, if a chemical mutagen alters an enzyme involved in carbohydrate biosynthesis, the plant may lack this specific trait which may not be desired by an agronomist. This is one of the examples of a mutant population which was developed at our institute. We applied the mutagen EMS to mutate an F1 hybrid variety of tomato which resulted in a range of novel mutant tomatoes with different phenotypical characteristics. Some of them exhibited modified flowers with a high number of petals and sepals as well as tomato fruit which had different characteristics in terms of ripening as well as shape and size. Some of the plants exhibited a decline in the degree of chlorophyll pigment in the leaves. Today's lesson plan is focuses on the following objectives. The first one is to introduce you to the concept of chemical mutagenesis. The second is to discuss the experimental design for plant mutagenesis using a chemical. And the third one is to develop a protocol for mutagenesis of an isogenic line of triticum species using ethane methane sulfonate. Upon completion of this module, you should demonstrate the ability to design ex an experiment to mutate plants using a chemical mutagen, develop a procedure to isolate mutants on the basis of phenotypical screening and genotyping. Another aspect of this particular lesson is to develop a protocol. The participants need to look at these two aspects. The first is to de determine germination efficiency and the second is to develop criteria for the selection of the chemical mutagen. The process of chemical mutagenesis commences with germination efficiency. This is to determine the number of seeds which will germinate per batch of the specific experiment. The second aspect is to establish the dosage of the mutagen. Too high dosages can result in an increased degree of mortality whereas too low dosages may lead to a reduction in the number of mutants. The third aspect involves screening. Screening is dependent on selection based on phenotypical traits or on the basis of genotypes. For instance, one can mutate a sugarcane plant and ascertain 
the phenotypic variation in terms of the yield of sugar as measured by the BRICS index, where one can mutate a low yielding variety of a specific plant and determine the number of mutants in terms of the yield per plant. Once a mutant population has been established, the progeny are derived by selfing. This ensures that the mutations are retained. However, one should note that mutations are generally lost over successive breeding cycles. The first aspect which we'll be discussing is germination efficiency. Now when you plant seeds, not all of them will germinate. For instance, when we plant 100 seeds, you may get a 70% germination rate. This 70% is indicates that 70 of the 100 seeds germinate and it's generally used as a standard of quality. One needs to develop or identify the number of germinating seeds in order to ascertain if the decline in germination efficiency was the result of application of the mutagenic agent. Germination efficiency is generally carried out without the use of the mutagen in order to determine the actual number of seeds which will germinate in the control. The second aspect is to establish the dosage of the mutagen. Ethyl methane sulfonate produces random mutations in genetic material by nucleotide substitution, particularly in guanine alkylation. This results in point mutations and the rate of mutation is 5 into 10 to the power of negative 4 to 5 into 10 to the power of negative 2 per gene. The application of ethyl methane sulfonate results in the formation of a base analog O6 ethyl guanine, which results in GC to AT transversions. This is the manner in which the guanine is converted by EMS into O6 ethyl guanine, which then base pairs with thymine. Subsequently, when DNA polymerase replicates this strand, it results in a mismatch and a GC to AT conversion. The ideal dosage is the one which kills 50% of the seeds in an experimental trial. This can be established by soaking the seeds in serially diluted solutions of the mutagen and determining the concentration which kills 50% of the plants. As was mentioned earlier, a strong concentration of mutagen may result in an excessive mortality, whereas a low concentration of mutagen may result in a high survival rate and a low number of mutants. One needs to ascertain the dosage for each species as this varies from plant to plant. Upon establishment of a mutant population, mutants have to be screened for specific traits. This can be done by the application of a specific screen. For instance, if you are screening for salt tolerant varieties of rice, you may apply a salinity gradient. If you are screening for herbicide tolerance, you may apply a herbicide gradient. You may also incorporate challenge tests involving insects, bacteria or other pathogens. The second aspect is the phenotypical characterization which can be done using BRICS index in the case of fruits or the fatty acid content in the case of oil seeds. Genotypic screening involves PCR specific genes followed by cleavage or targeted sequencing of specific genes associated with specific traits. Screening using selective agents is one of the most important screens used for herbicide screening. Another important aspect is response to fertilizers as not all mutants may respond to nitrogenous fertilizers. Screening by tilling or targeted induced local lesions in genomes is a method which involves PCR of a specific locus followed by digestion with cell nuclease. So for instance, if you 
carried out a PCR of a specific gene in the control and mutant and hybridized them, mismatches will result in non-perfect base pairing. The enzyme CEL nuclease will digest these mismatches resulting in a banding profile. For instance, in as one can see in this CEL nuclease assay, there is a high number of mutations. For instance, in the mutant 1, which is in lane 1, we have three point mutations, whereas in mutant 4 and 5, we can see a large number of mutations. In this case of 4, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 point mutations. In the case of 10 ele and 11, one notes that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 mutations. This is indicative of mutation rate in terms of the number of mutations per base pair of the PCR product. CAL nuclease is derived from celery and it specifically creates a cleavage in a mismatch region of a control and a mutated PCR product. Once a mutant population has been established the subsequent populations M1 and M2 are arrived at by self-fertilization. For instance, upon exposure of a tomato plant to a chemical mutagen, the first germinated seedlings are designated as M0. Subsequent generations derived by selfing are designated as M1 and M2 respectively. One should take into account that mutations may not be retained over subsequent generations and eventually the plant will revert to its wild type. Registration of novel varieties of plants can be done under the Plant Variety Protection Act. In Malaysia, the plant registration total is as indicated on the link. Each country will have its own specific portal for the registration of novel varieties of mutant plants. One of the experiments which you can consider performing in the laboratory involves the use of a seed which is readily germinated and the use of a mutagen such as EMS prepared in a suitable buffer with varying concentrations. All of these experiments must be conducted in a fume hood with the use of suitable protective gear as EMS is a chemical mutagen. Seeds must be soaked overnight in the mutagen following which they will be washed and germinated. The germination efficiency is one of the aspects which needs to be recorded followed by phenotypical characterization. The observations for this experiment are as follows. For each concentration of EMS, one needs to record the germination frequency, the germination efficiency, and the dosage at which 50% of the mutants uh, survive. Some of the discussion points which you can include in this lecture are, does chemical mutagenesis for the development of agronomic crops pose a greater risk as compared to genetic modification of specific targets? Thank you for watching this open educational resource. As mentioned earlier, this resource is developed under the Creative Commons licensing and you are free to download, reuse and remix this resource. Thank you.